Hey everyone, Anthony here. So uh, yeah, crypto mats. Uh, for anyone who's familiar with ID mats, you can skip this section, but if not, it's all good. It's like two minutes long. So essentially, crypto mats are trying to provide more information in the form of color and metadata to the 2D side that allow us to target areas of an image more effectively, more precisely. By that, what do I mean? Well, we'll take through the old school ID mat approach. Here I have my scene with a gigantic sphere, a cylinder and a cube. It's lit, it will cost however many cycles to render, and when I get it through, there's an alpha channel. Let's say I wanted to do something specifically to the sphere, I have no way to target it um, outside of doing roto, which I really don't want to do. So I would ask upstream, say, hey, can you render throughout a mat for this thing? So let me do that thing and just go, easiest thing is to give me regions of solid color that represent the object. Red's obviously the sphere, green and blue are the other two objects. So then I can just make a really simple map like this. So the red channel, the green channel, or the blue channel, All right? Straight up, you can see the challenge here that I only have three things I can separate out. So let's say uh, you wanted to separate eyes, nose, rest of face, slight problem, I don't have ears. Uh, if I wanted to separate foreground, midground, background objects or a cluster of them, also a problem. This is where we start wanting to put more detail here. And obviously we can do things like using color. Now, as humans, we can spot this immediately and go, all right, cool, there are four separate objects here. And this is kind of where we're going with crypto mats. We're adding, um, we're using color in a much more nuanced fashion rather than is it red, is it green, is it blue? The other thing of note is that with the setup I've got here, I have to actually know what each color or what each region corresponds to. I don't have that metadata stashed anywhere. So crypto mats also kind of helps us solve that problem, right? So let me pass over now to that side of it and we'll have a look at that in detail. Okay, so moving to this, you'll see a just a gigantic pink area, this thing here. So this is actually a gigantic grid full of bunnies. The alpha is pretty, you know, solid. It's not that useful. But what we do have is correct crypto mat data that's flowing downstream, which provides me both the metadata and the specialized color information I need to go and pick things here. All right. So how do we access it? Well, we chuck down a crypto mat node, this guy here, and let's put the viewer in. When we click the preview mats option, we are going to see a million, well, a thousand bunnies. So this is actually all false color information. It's just a visualization. The actual colors underneath are a little bit wackier, but this helps us see how many things are available. I'm gonna use this picker out option here. I'm just gonna grab certain of these guys. Those two out here, something out here, that big guy here, and something there. And you'll see I'm accumulating bunnies by name. Check the alpha channel and you can see I've been able to target these guys very specifically. Right? So these are the specific things that I wanted. And this is kind of the power of crypto mats. It's the ability to segment your scene very precisely and provide this information in a textual format. The reason I also mentioned textual is I can actually type stuff in here. Bunny, bunny, um, let's go with bunny 200, which is down at the corner there. But also I can do bunny with wildcards. So every bunny in the two something sequence. So you can also do this, everything. Not that useful, but you get the idea. B star, um, it's not picking up the these things here because these are called transparent, transparent grid seven. So I should get to do uh, star grid and then there we go. So these things, why is it not picking up? Oh, right, because it ends in the word grid, star, grid, star. Yep, all right, cool, right, star, star, grid, star. So there's there's abilities to target things based upon name, which is actually really handy. The other thing as well this transparent grid is showing is we'll grab this thing up here as well. Uh, that's a little bit more obvious. This guy, the big speedy bunny, has transparency or motion blur in these areas. So it deals fine with occupancy of things that are moving through space. Obviously, it's not going to solve the problem of trying to figure out how to separate the background from the moving object, but that's a standard problem with transparency and smeary kind of objects. So hopefully that gives you an idea of some of the power of crypto mats. 
And just to demonstrate more of what's useful about it, this is closer to the techie side here. Let's clear that. So all these guys here are essentially object instances probably, I'm guessing, but that's what it feels like, all right? But we don't have to restrict ourselves to object. It's just information. It's just segmentation information. So if I zoom you across to the right here, uh, here are some other examples. So this one here, this crypto map, is a material-based one. So there's uh, obviously flower bee petals, which are all these guys that lit up. We've got the bunny, which is a porcelain material of some description. And you could also grab a grass material. So you can see that's material-based split ups. This one here, this is an asset. So we have the bunny, ubiquitous bunny, and we have the set, and we have the hero flower. So, so this could be grouped based upon some other kind of metric. So we could target the set. Uh, last one here is, oops, last one here is crypto object. So we have the bunny again. Let's clear that one. We have flower bee petal 19, flower bee petal 9, 18, 12. You've got the grass foreground, which is just one thing. And then you've got individual petals and stuff. So you do have a lot of power. And the advantage of this stuff is that theoretically, everything's already named in the scene, all right? No one's having to go and assign shaders or do anything painful like that. It's, hopefully the integration is as such at the renderer that says, well, if you've named the scene a certain way, let's pull a particular property, shove it into crypto mat data, encode it and pass it down the line. So in essence, it's um, if you've organized the scene in 3D land, like profit from that work, send it down to 2D, allow them to go and, and pick and choose the bits and pieces they need. So yeah, hopefully that's explained a little bit about what crypto mats are good for and what they effectively do. There's not like there's a lot of interesting technical detail under the hood, but from a user standpoint and really from a conceptual standpoint, think of it as ID mats just taken to the nth degree. Um, yeah. So if anyone has any questions, sing out, let us know. Otherwise, yeah, talk to you guys later.